when Matt and I originally sat down, we really wanted Back to Black to be the framework within which we told the story. What we did was really sort of set the narrative around each song, how best to serve her in feeling that her music is telling her own story. It feels more like an insight into how Amy saw the world rather than an insight into how the world sees Amy. My role in this movie is I'm my title is music producer. I'm sort of overseeing the music and the film and more so work with Marisa on her performance and trying to get the nuance of being what it is to be at Amy Winehouse. If we're gonna do this, you have to make a choice when you do a movie like this. You make a choice is do we use backing tracks or do we use the person that's playing the role? I think if we'd have dubbed Amy's voice in, there'd have been a disconnect emotionally. Amy has a voice that's irreplaceable by anyone. What Marisa does is she carries the emotion and she carries the feeling of Amy at that moment. You try to identify the key features in the sound so that when you listen to it, it reminds you very, very strongly of Amy Winehouse, but it isn't an impression and that's a really important uh, distinction and quite difficult to pull off, to be honest with you. I think she's done brilliantly. I'm never going to have Amy's exact face, so the echo chambers will always be slightly different, but it's about jaw placement and resonance and nasality versus like a chesty voice. Maurice actually on set is playing the guitar and singing, and the, the challenge actually for her and the team around is, is for her to keep Amy's singing up for this length of time. At every point when we work together, I just thought, you know, you've nailed this. Very important for us was that Amy's band came back together and recorded the music with Marisa. Well, there was a thought process that went on before we started recording the tracks of like, who's gonna record the tracks? And Dale's name came up and I was like, well, why not? I mean, A, he's a gent, but he's also a great bass player and the band were great. And the band that played at the Grammys, the band that played at the Grammys when we recorded it. I got a call to talk about the film and would I want to get involved. I generally say yes to these things because I just want to make sure Amy's represented in the best way possible. Early days, a lot of trepidation of what kind of film we were going to make. And we were very sensitive to them and, and saying, you know, are we, are we getting this right? And making sure that we're true to life. And it was really useful to have that spirit of Amy running through this. It's been, for me, it's been somewhat therapeutic. It's amazing sometimes when I watch the performances, I feel like I'm performing myself, you know, so. It's been wonderful, wonderful to relive those memories. Well, I feel like I've gone a full circle because I was in Abbey Road recording when we did Nowhere Boy. So to sort of come back through the doors to be doing another movie and recording it here is quite special for me. You know, when Dale and the band came in here, they were brilliant, you know. The weird thing was, of course, we can't use them in the film because they're 20 years older. They asked us to get involved with the uh, stage set especially with the bass player, I'd have to tell him, don't move, because <laughs> I never used to. <laughs> this film is about a life of love. It's a life of suffering, it's a life of experience. And Maurice is doing that, Maurice is portraying that. And it's so important that she carries on that through in her song performance as well. Otherwise it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be real.